A quick search for non-toxic cookware is going to bring up some really pricey options as well as a lot of conflicting information. But I'm here to tell you that there are some very affordable options even at your local thrift store. So buckle up, I think you're gonna learn a thing or two when I tell you the top three types of cookware you need in your kitchen, as well as what to avoid when shopping for non-toxic cookware. Hi, I'm Andrea from Morningstar Homestead, and the first category we're going to talk about today is non-stick, non-toxic, coated cookware. This cookware is often known as ceramic cookware. I'm not going to talk about Teflon. I think we all know that that will basically kill you but this cookware is often touted as green and totally safe even the fda approves of it but i did quite a bit of research for this video and one of the things i found out is that the so-called ceramic coated cookware is not really coated with ceramic it's coated by using a type of technology called soul gel which is silica and oxygen and basically a proprietary formula that changes with each company one of the top brands that carries this green ceramic coated cookware tested very high for heavy metals like cadmium, lead, and even mercury. This coating is really not all that durable. It scratches easily and often underneath it is aluminum or some other type of undesirable metal. Even if it's stainless steel underneath, the actual coating itself there's really not a lot known about it and quite often it's not tested by a third party so we can only rely on the companies themselves and what they're telling us on top of that it's really not all that durable even the companies say that you have to be really careful when cooking with it not to scratch it it seems to wear out after a few years it's really a no-go in my book so what are you supposed to do if you want non-toxic non-stick cookware well, the absolute best option that I have found is cast iron. Food really doesn't adhere very well to cast iron if you do three things. You season it well. I've seasoned mine once in the 16 years I've had them and never had to reseason them again. Two, you need to heat them up properly. Make sure that the pan is good and hot before you put those eggs on there. And three, use the proper oil. Um, I'm talking about healthy oils, of course. Cast iron has actually been around since the sixth century from China, and it's gotten really popular over the past few years. So it is a little bit harder to find at thrift stores, but I do find it quite a bit on Facebook Marketplace and at estate sales. And when looking for cast iron, there's a couple things you wanna look for. You wanna look for American brands and you wanna look for something heavy duty. You can really feel the heaviness. There are thinner brands and I've actually had them break on the oven. I'll link a couple of really good brands down below. And one other thing that you want to avoid when looking for cast iron is any ceramic coated cast iron. I know that we all want our beautiful, brightly colored ceramic Dutch ovens, but the technology for ceramic coating actually uses nanoparticles, which can contain chemicals that actually cross over into your cells and can contaminate you on a whole different level than other types of coatings. A lot of these companies do advertise lines that are cadmium and lead free, which is great. But again, they are not tested by third parties. So we really have to rely on them to be accountable, which I'm just not comfortable with. On a practical level, I do have a couple of ceramic coated Dutch ovens. I use them when making my sourdough bread. I, I coat them with parchment paper and use them that way. But I have found that they scratch quite easily and really they are less non-stick than regular cast iron. If you have a good cast iron pan, it really can be a family heirloom. You'll see these vintage and antique cast iron at estate sales that are dozens, even a hundred years old and still work really well. Cast iron is my top choice when cooking, but it's not my only choice. And one of the reasons for that is when you use exclusively one type of cookware, especially a metallic cookware, and you cook with acidic foods like tomatoes in it, those metals, maybe they're not necessarily harmful metals, but they can leach into your body and could potentially cause some type of imbalance. So I like to switch things up a bit. And the next type of cookware that I really like to use is glassware. Now glassware is an especially great option for baking. I love to make bread in glass and I love to cook casseroles in glass. 
but there is one thing that you want to avoid with glassware and really that is any type of coloring. When you start seeing glassware that has a lot of different colors in it, those colors are very often lead based. And I'm talking about the whole colored glassware, but also like markings on glassware, like maybe you're measuring cups. And I hate to say it, but grandma's beautiful vintage Pyrex with all the beautiful colors best, had best be left on a shelf for decoration. Those are often really high in lead. So really try to go for clear glassware. And I see this all the time at thrift stores, especially Pyrex. I, that's a really good brand to look for. Anchor Hawking is another one. Stay away from the colors, stay clear, you'll be safe. Glassware cannot take the stress of temperature changes very well. If you heat your oven up too high, like I've forgotten about a glass pan and left it in there when I was heating it up to 500 to make sourdough bread, it will burst. I've had glassware that has burst because I've taken it out of a hot oven and put it on a wet towel. That is the one thing that you really need to watch with glassware, but otherwise it is one of my favorite materials to use in the kitchen. The next type of cookware that you really should have in your kitchen is stainless steel. Stainless steel lasts forever, especially if you can find a high quality brand. You can usually feel the quality when you lift it up and feel how heavy it is, especially the bottom. There is one thing that you wanna avoid with stainless steel though, and that is any type of like metal decoration. Sometimes you'll see these on the rivets on the handles. You'll see like gold decoration or brass, and these can potentially have heavy metals and other things you don't wanna ingest in your food. So avoid that when looking for stainless steel, but otherwise it's pretty good most of the time. One of my favorite brands to look for at thrift stores is Revereware. It often has the copper bottom and these wonderful plastic handles that keep the handles cool when you're cooking. I'm going to put a couple of links in the comments of stainless steel sets that are very reasonably priced and have been tested for heavy metals. Now I know that some of the information I've given in this video might seem a bit controversial and doesn't exactly tally up with what the FDA says, but do remember the FDA approved Teflon for many years before banning it. So you really have to do your own research. And I'm also going to post some links for the research I did down below if you want to make doubly sure. Now I know I said there were three types of cookware you needed in your kitchen. There are some more expensive options like non-toxic clay, but they're often really pricey. Stoneware can be good as well, but that can be a bit iffy. You really have to do research on if it was properly tested by a third party or not. As far as utensils, when cooking, I love to use wood. Not only is it beautiful, but it is non-toxic. Silicon can be highly suspect because it has often tested high for cadmium and even lead. The options I'm going to put down below are all at Amazon or Walmart and it can probably be thrifted. If you'd like to learn more about saving money in the kitchen, please watch this video here.